broadcast live. Mojo Jojo, she kicking in the dojo. 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 Yo, Gigi Battle go live in. Hello there. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? I'm awesome. How are you, Slicker? This is so cool, Yo, right? Lifestyle. This is dope. This is dope. This is dope. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I like the hair. I like the hair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I see you got the hair show going on. Um, it's, it's on Soweto TV also. Yes, Tell me about yes. that. Tell me about that. I mean, I've always, I've always, I've never paid attention because, you know, I always think like, Yo, why is Gigi doing it? And then I saw the image and I was like, yeah, but she's always got like some some crazy hairstyles. She's always nice. doing something with her hair. You know, and, and I've never thought of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I mean, tell me about like just the importance of, I guess, your crown, you know, and, and like I, I've never actually thought about it. I guess I'm a guy yeah. also. It's not like I'm out there thinking about yeah. hair and stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think... Um... So it's really weird because the first time the hair conversation um, happened was when I was still at varsity. And I've always been so big on hair, specifically African hair. So one of the theses I actually did in anthropology was on hair and the politics of hair and women and hair, how much money we spend on hair, wigs, oh, wow. natural hair, short looks. And I'm probably one of the most like spitzer when it's come to hair. Um, and it was such a genuine conversation. Uh, I bumped into the founder of the, the African Hair Awards at the Sommers last year. And she was like, dude, a lot of your hairstyles, how do you come up with some of your hairstyles? And I was like, I literally took three, four different looks, put them together. I tried to balance out the conversation between the woke sisters and the so-called slay queens. So sometimes mm. I'll like do this and I'll do that. But I'm not judgmental when it comes to that kind of stuff. Um, so that's how I put my hairstyles together. And then she told me there was this really cool show that they were trying to do with the Gauteng film. Um, uh, is it permission? Yeah. And, <laughs> and uh, they were looking to get somebody to host the show. Somebody who had like extensive um, um, knowledge on hair. And from a lot of people who don't even know that, I can actually do hair. So my mom used to own a hair salon um, a while ago and I can do everything from like dreadlocks to putting your wig in to yeah so it was just like a new adventure for me and it's working out really really well uh, you know that's amazing like this is the thing about you you've always got like these um you've always got like you've always got something else you know what I mean you you, you never just stop with one thing you know I'm always saying that, you know, the, the gift and the curse with, like, Gigi is that she's so highly talented that you start loving her for one thing, then she does another thing, and you're like, wait, wait, I'm not comfortable with that. But then she really excels <laughs> on it, too. You know what I mean? Um, why is it so important for you just to be so multifaceted, you know, with regards to how you move, you know? Um, I think because I had an honest conversation with... Uh, a guy named Maraza, like uh, Maraza is like a very good friend of mine and he's extremely talented. I remember going to yeah. his place and finding like guitars on the wall and almost on the roof. And he was like, friend, you need to just acknowledge the fact that you're a little bit crazy and you like learning new things. And you should, God, you should actually do those things. Like so many people in history, we always find out about stuff, you know, about how, um, how Gandhi, this person could do this this person could brew their own beer during the corona situation <laughs> i wonder <laughs> like, weird things that people end up learning and i think for me um it was just like wearing that on my sleeve and deciding that you know what if i'm good at something i'm going to like yes i love music i'm always going to be rooted in music i'll always do music but there's nothing wrong with trying to almost create a connection between music and everything else we do around us. So yeah. if I could like, cook really well, I'm going to jump in to do that. Um, and with this show, I think I'd really like to use it as a vehicle to be able to like um, push different female rappers. I think Rouge has got like some really crazy hairstyles she does at times. Nadia is with the wig game is amazing. So I really just want to take all those different things I'm learning, put them together and see how far we can push hip hop. 
like living, eating, breathing that the hip hop culture has always spoken about, you know, here in different, you know, spaces and instances, the raps and stuff. So let's like actively get involved in these topics. So yeah. Well, I, I I know that you do like the show, and and I haven't seen the show obviously on Soweto TV because yeah. obviously I'm not in Soweto. Oh, it's it's on BS TV. It That's is on BS TV channel two five one slicker. Wow. <laughs> what did I do, <laughs> guys? <laughs> what did I do? I was channel two five one BS TV. Yo, I, 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 I was gonna say that like um you know we just we just need to do a show like a girl show you know where you're doing girls hair you know what I mean like you know I think we got to do a girl show like that you know it's looking like we just need a girl show yes. you know what I mean where you do people's hair and y'all talk about whatever y'all talk about you know yes. while she's steaming or whatever the case be and you do whatever hairstyle or you just approach them because you're like i know you always like doing this listen mm. i got you and then I you're having these like conversations it. with them yeah definitely definitely that's a good idea people heard it idea. people have to die now we know how they operate <laughs> yo yo so so we we, we got to do that though i'm saying we're that we got we got to do that. We gotta do a Gigi Slicker show where we do that type of shit where you're just doing hair. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, absolutely. That's a good idea. I'm down. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's get out of this quarantine and let's have a proper conversation. You know? Mm -hmm. You're still out there though in the streets though with the music and you're really like doing like great work. I mean, I saw that like um, you were on Miss Super's PSA remix and uh, and and 2 p.m. DJs um, do it better. Um, this is a dope joint, you know. And tell me about Lockingville Super Bowl. Uh, you know, I, 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 that one I missed. I never, that one I missed. You, you never saw that? Yeah. Uh, so... <laughs> I've always wanted to work with Lockenville. I remember when I was um, studying in the UK and like they were the biggest thing after the Vuvuzela in 2010. And everyone kept saying like, oh, Genesis, do you know Lockenville? Apparently they're South African and they're doing really well. And I think at that point in time, I almost like planted something into the universe where I was like, I have to work with them because I was, I was a Lockenville fan because I often felt that hip hop would, take it to another level with their music um same feeling i get with like chukana a lot of the time so when that that uh the song with uh taylor man and nasty happened for me it was just like yeah this 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 sounds really nice so with them it was like one of those and uh they they hit me up um and i went through to cape town and we went and we yeah we just collaborated and did a really really cool song and the song is doing really well and for mm. anyone who knows me, I just feel that we need to use, like, anything to get hip-hop out there. And for me, that's what it's about. Like, anything to get people, like, acquainted with the culture. And Lockenville has also got their own fan base. Shout out to them. They're doing, like, extremely well, especially in the international uh, sphere. So for me, it was like, let's see what happens. And it, yeah, it's a dope song. You should go check it out. It's called Super Bowl. I should, I should. No, I know everything else. So, you know, I, I, was, I was just saying, you know, I just asked for a little, yo, let me, let me, let me just make sure I'm not missing anything on Gigi and I asked for a little email, you know, just so I'm up to scratch. And then yeah. I never knew about that one in all honesty, you know. Um, so, so you, you said that you studied in the UK. Yeah, I studied in the UK for a few years. I got this really nerdy bursary ones. <laughs> uh, with Richard Branson so we went out we got to meet him and there were five kids selected in the country and we went out there to study um, and then I came back to do my matric here but yeah like it was just yeah a different world and I think that's where hip hop was actually born for me because I'd get so bored and I'd just be like streaming online um, and then I decided you know what I'm such a fan I should probably try and take this seriously and it's like if you dig hard enough on YouTube You'll find like videos of me like this, sitting in front of a laptop, like looking really young and crusty and trying to rap. <laughs> I always say that to people, I'm like, yo, if you can find that one day, like, yeah, that's gonna be a really, really cool to topic one day. 
Well, I never. I, well, I first heard you when you were crusty, though. You know, I mean, ah! the first time. I, <laughs> so I heard you before, and before, like, uh, I never knew you, but the first time I heard you, I was like, damn, because you stood out. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So yeah, I definitely heard you a while ago. Um, well, but maybe you got you were crusty. Yeah, maybe I never saw the crusty. Yeah. <laughs> Wow! <laughs> All right, I see you. <laughs> I have people laughing in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> but gee, you know, I, I think that, like, you know, you are. I, I always ask myself, like, it's like, although you're from the hood, you know, I, like, which is obviously something that you really like, kind of put forward in your joints. You know, I'm like, you, you, you. So you don't have to be dealing this rap shit. Yeah. You know. I mean, yeah. like, you know what I mean? You don't have to be dealing with all the shit that it comes with. You know, you're so smart. You know what I mean? I like, I like, I like music. I like rapping. It's, it's such a sincere and genuine thing for me. Like, it, I, I had opportunities to do a lot of stuff with my life. Went to varsity. Every time I feel this itch and this need to go and study something, I honestly do. So that that never stops for me. I'll always be a scholar. But um, I think it's important to have a voice like mine in hip hop at times. You know, um, for me, it's it's something that's so authentic. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to be doing that for a very long time. I've heard a lot of people saying, not a lot of people, like a few people saying, like, you really don't need this. Like, you really don't need this. Um, but I do feel like it's it's become a platform for me as well. I don't think I would have been at the Psalmers. I don't think the African Hair Awards would have had a conversation with me if I wasn't a musician and in that space because of what I did. So with that, it's it's it's, it's the fact that it's, it'll always be my core. That's 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 who I am, and I love doing it, and I do it for like beyond everything, beyond the money, beyond the fame, beyond anything else. For me, it's just something I love doing, and no matter how hard people try, they'll have to deal with me for the next ten, fifteen years. So I mean, look, and like you know, you you can stop me also if you want, but like I, I there's also that sense to me that like you know um. Um, like you educated, right? You, 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 you've got a global kind of perspective of the world, you know. Um, you're one of the few people I think who comes from the hood who gets the opportunities that you've had, who gets to Thanks. see the world, a female as a fe as a black female, who gets yeah. to see the world um, the way that you've seen it. I mean, you just came back from America just now, you know. Um, what what do you think what do you think you never dealt with that got you into the corner of depression because it seems like you're so aware you know and you're so smart and and for i wouldn't expect that from a person like you you know what i mean um, yeah because obviously we judge people from what we see in the outside you know what i mean um i think a lot of things validation for one the industry is a very nice place but it can also be super toxic and um for the past few months few couple like hot, one and a half years i've really been reflecting on myself my environment the people around me the people i let into my space and i've become a bit of a loner um like from a personal you know um yeah from a, a personal space also because i realized that I got into many situations because I let so many people speak to me. I let so many people have input on what I am. Um, and I think that was the problem with me. And then, um, yeah, I got a super, super rude awakening. Uh, <laughs> and I've, I've started to understand that, like, really, there's nothing wrong with being selfish and deciding that, you know, now it's about me. Now it's about writing my story. No one gets to write it for me. Um, the best thing you can ever have is a bounce back because there's so much to write about. And I'm really young, you know, um, mm -hmm. and I've, I've had my fair share. I've had my fair share, but now How old is really young, by the way. <laughs> I'm not, I, I can get into the club, but I can't get into certain clubs in the States. Let's leave it okay. there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's leave it there. Um, so, I, I'm just, I, I don't want to roll with the punches anymore more. I want to give the punches. I've decided that. Um, I'm going to live for me. I went on a very nice spiritual journey as well. Um, 
an ancestral journey and I'm in a very, very good space now. I'm in a very good space. Do you think that also like um, in, in you, like you really, really, really realize about your life, take for instance that, I mean, you are, you are a black woman with power, you know, um, because you're so gifted and, and not just with what you can do, it's because the, the universe has also given you a, you know, I say there's some people who just locked in one place and they don't know the rest of the world. And they don't know outside their space. So you even Ooh. gifted with experience to, um, to, to have a better perspective on things, you know? Um, do you ever feel, do you ever feel that like, especially after you went through everything, do you ever feel like um, you just never knew how much power you have? You just never saw how much gifts you have? Yeah, and I think it's because I was looking for that from people. I want, wanted people to tell me that, like, I, I didn't realize that it was just power in execution, like execution after you've thought something through, um, not waiting on somebody else. So not needing a record label. I had to have a very honest conversation with uh, Maya Shoma Josie, and she had to help me like strategize my whole business plan as a young person. Because although you're looking at Gigi and you think she knows everything, she doesn't know everything. Understanding mm. how much power I have as a young independent female hip hop artist. Like now I don't need to wait on anyone. Now I don't need to, um, you know, get permission from anyone to collaborate with Lockinville or to collaborate with MC and 2 PM DJs. Like now I can go out and do it myself. I completely underestimated myself. And I feel that I do regret that. I think that's the one thing I, I do regret. Like um, you can trust yourself when making decisions. You can trust yourself to put things out. And for me, that was the biggest, that is the biggest lesson I've learned to date. I mean, I, I just want to, maybe I'm treading on like deep conversations now, but like, I mean, as you've just said, you already know if you like, like go back home to Soweto, but you went and studied in the UK, you literally got all the qualifications you got in varsity. Um, you... I mean, people that like just generally don't speak to black girls like in the hood um, are speaking to you. You have all these things, you know, it's not like you got depressed, like without them, you got depressed with all these things <laughs> under your belt. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. Like, it's like, it's almost like you, you were, people come to you for the power, right? You got people that come to you for the power. And you never realize that people come to you for the power. So you were literally just trying to, like you're saying, just reaffirm yourself. And I wonder, as a black woman who is just so powerful in my view, um, and this is just a thought, I don't know. Is it because there are not enough women from where you come from who had, had this power? So it is always difficult for you to, to actually own it and say, no, nah, I don't need that. I'll work to get to that. Do you know what I mean? I'm just wondering because there's men, maybe I could be a stand up because there was another guy that I was that I looked up to who was also like hardcore in the streets and everything else. But with women, did you come from in Soweto specifically where there were not enough women who had that power? You know what I mean? That you I had, think, that you see. I think, yeah. It's this a question. Is a very I don't know. Good question. This is a very good question. I think they were men who didn't want women to realize that they could do stuff. I think even till this day in the industry, there are people who decide that female rappers cannot be on a song together, decide that female rappers need to go up against each other. People that mm. actively decide that they're going to take their pow your power away from you by deciding what you're going to do with your life and with your career. And I think that is in the household. I think that is in our communities. I think that is just mm. something that's just, you know, for instance, um, with, with our parents, right? There were certain professions you'd go into because you were female, you were expected to, the best thing you could become is a nurse. And that's exactly what my mother became. She became a nurse. Mm. Um, whereas with, with men, like, yo, the sky is never the limit. And I think we, we are still trying to break down those narratives now, those structural narratives that have been put in, in, in place for, for, for years, right? I know that there's something really, and I know I'm going to be grilled about this, but I really don't care. There is a video circulating right now of a certain young woman, and she's 
been compromised um and this is not like this is not the first of these kinds of videos that are going around there've been many but what seems to startle me is the conversation around her rather than around the person who put it out rather than the person that she's with in the video rather than, like mm. it's about her and how she's been objectified and i said something on my live i said i was like baby girl go start your instagram page go start your facebook page go start your twitter page block out the noise and try and get something from it since everybody's looking for you might as well ride with it and do something great with yourself because this is the constant narrative like it's always around the woman messing up it's always around the woman being objectified and then after that happens she goes into a little hole and then people are hoping that she, there's going to be a paper coming out where she kills herself or something happens to her is this this is this is what it is and at some point i think even with the way things are structurally we need to decide that you know what's actually i'm going to i'm i'm going to roll with it everybody knows like i will i will fight for a kanyimbao i will fight for a bonang mateba i will fight for zoto abantu because in a very very diff, different way to what we're used to as conservative south africans they stand for something and and that's mm. what i'm here for as a young black woman I mean they stand for the for 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 they stand for for being unique you know they they they, they it's like You're I true. constantly yeah you, I, I constantly say that like we're in a world where we constantly redefining ourselves and if men can do it women can do it too Absolutely. you know what i mean um and i mean and you mentioned something like you see because it's not just in the industry where you say men limit you but you mentioned something like your mother was a nurse so you can imagine your mother put you in a position of power you understand it's almost Absolutely. like every move your mother made to take care of you she was actually empowering you to to be bigger than this the the box that the world created for her you know what yeah. i mean so it's almost like as a woman i can see it's like now i understand how you can get to that point where you've got all these gifts but then you go back to your mother your blood and she's probably in that box right but like it's difficult for you to kind of disconnect from her dad yeah, exactly. but she's got a bigger vision it's, it's, it's difficult for you to see what she sees um because you seeing what you see in her world physically and it's not because she can control it you know what i mean it's almost That's like true. your mother was locked down by the system but in her mind she was free because she freed you and you never saw that freedom you know what That's, i mean yeah That's crazy, right? You should do some like motivational speaking stuff, Slicker. At girls schools. I think that'll be something. I'm tired of hearing. Look. I'm so tired. You know what? I I know this is so wrong, but I'm so tired of hearing women speak to women all the time. Like I mean, that's great, but I'd really love to see men speak to women and women speak to men. I think I think that's also what we need. Look, I, I mean, I'm in a way for all these structuralist rules of who can give advice how i i would i i think as a young high school girl i would have appreciated a man coming to speak to me about the world i'm just being honest well i mean look i mean um and we, you do need that you know what i mean uh, as much as we need women also you know um as as a as a boy child you need women i mean i'm a i'm a heavy heavily strong advocate for women and and you know i've got a son and i always said i make kings but then you know like uh, last week i got a daughter you know so <laughs> 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 congratulations but, but, thank you shout out you know um but like but i'm i'm a huge advocate though for women you know and um, and it's because you see i always say my mother literally like only finished her matric when she was 50 years old you know but um and my mother was born in 1942 now even if my mother finished her matric when in 1968 or something she wouldn't have had the opportunity she would have been stuck as a as a maid or as a nurse she couldn't use anything that she had anyway but what my mother gave me is like this crazy work ethic you know what i mean because i get it that's why even when she was 50 she still like did her matric you know what i mean so i definitely really advocate for women because i'm always going i'm always thinking how many women are like my mother who have so much because my mother i know how much potential she has yeah. i mean if you look at me you can imagine how hardcore my mother is you know what mm. i mean um and and i said how many women literally like have got that potential but yeah. they not being put in those spaces cuz a they haven't seen women um being celebrated in a powerful space that just is normally dominated by men 
-hmm. And women literally like organize this crazy world of ours. Um, even with Slick on Life, you know, it's the women that organizes. You know what I mean? I won't lie, you know? So, this, so, so you know, I mean, um, that's why it always like perturbed me and sometimes perturbed me to a point where when I see, when I see things about you, it would get me so angry because I know how smart you are. You know what I mean? Yeah. Me in, too. Not in a negative angry, but in a, in a, in a, in a, far, in a brother that's far away, but like, I'm like, Gigi, but why? You know what I mean? All the time, all the time. And I, it's so weird that you're saying this because I actually had a conversation with somebody um, that you know, I mean, like an industry person. And they said to me, they're like, ah, nowadays you're like so cold and so distant. And so, and I was just like, I feel like there's just more peace around what I do now. Like, I'm going to give off what I do. You, you don't need to know anything else about me. You don't need to. And, and I feel it's best that way. Especially with our industry. I feel like it's, it's a constant trap, man, for females. Like, they're just waiting for a story. They're just waiting to say something. Like, they'll see something in a picture or in a video or, like, anything. The personal is more important to them than what you're doing professionally. And that just, that grates me. I absolutely hate it. Yeah, you know, I think you, you're in my bucket list of doing a song just for fun. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> you, you launched an app called My Fixer SA. How's that going? It's going really well. Um, there are eight of us who, some from varsities, well, we're from different varsities, and people came together to create this app. And the idea around the app is that we ha it's basically like an Uber or a Taxify, but for people who can um, do quick jobs. So they come in and um, they, for instance, do your ironing, they do your washing, they can do some of your cleaning. Um, you decide on how long they stay. Um, and these people have been vetted, so they go through a whole vetting process. Um, if they're in the artisan industry, they need a qualification for that. We've also got girls on call for makeup. So it's going really, really well. Um, there's lots of demand in areas that are specifically uh, students, sort of like populates, for, for obvious reasons. Nobody wants to clean or do their own uh, laundry. Uh, but it's going really, really, really well. Um, for now, we just like really encouraging people to join it, especially people who just want to be their own bosses and are doing jobs that are very, I don't know, like sidelined, you know, uh, so plumbers, carpenters, domestic work, makeup. Um, yeah, they're like lots of categories. You can just go onto the app store on Google Play and you'll find it there. Um, and it's called the My Fixer app. Um, yeah, quick, efficient, very safe as well. And they come dressed in our whole gear because we like, you know, looking professional and looking good and yeah dope man and um are we are we i mean i guess we're not going to get the gg gang show with the coronavirus happening this year yeah i know guys and i had an international surprise for you guys i had oh. Oh, there were so many things it was going to be bigger and better we learned from the first one um we had an amazing project manager this year shout out to him uh ah oh guys it was going to be an amazing experience with like some really nice sponsors but unfortunately but we'll see how things go but it was really important for us to do it this year again you know um last year there were a lot of things we learned i think um a lot of things that we underestimated and a lot of things that we were bouncing back from this year and so this year i was just like ready to rock you know <laughs> but unfortunately fortunately this happened so the team and i have just decided that we're going to go back into it and just see like once everything is cool see what else we can add to the experience because the show is experiential i don't want it to be another festival that people just go to that is just yeah i need pink roses from the sky and nice bubbles and nice things girls like like ferris wheels at the rose fest shout out to shakana i think i want something that you know it's like oh, then you bring your wife over there and your daughter and it's just like ah oh, makeup and nice things and pink drinks and that's what i need the gg gang to look like so this year we were ready guys but it is what it is Hey, yo, man, you're multi-talented. You got, you got a lot of things, man, on your plate. And, um, and, and I think that, like, that's just, that's why I say you got, you, you got so much power. Thank you. you know, Thank you, you so know, some, some people, when you ask them, what are you doing? They say, I don't even know what I'm doing for my life. You know, you, you, it just comes and you do it and you execute, you know? Thank so, um, 
it's really exciting, man. And um, and I do want to, um, I I just I just want you to acknowledge that power, G. You know, it's not even about where you come from. Um, but I I love how you're always shouting out the hood, though. You know what I mean? Um, it, it, it's 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 very important because um because the the kids got to see you and the girls got to see you and even the guys and they got to go yo is she really from Soweto you know cuz people say to me ah are you really from Mekatlong are you really from the education that's when that's when you know that like you you you've pushed yourself so far ahead that like um people don't even see you as one of them because they see you as actually a, a a tunnel to go through yeah. to get to their dreams or to see something you know what i mean yeah, so um thanks, i think thanks. you got to always you, you always got to do that i hear it on your rhymes you just make it clear that yo and you like you like collaborating with the dudes also you know <laughs> um i need another song that with youngster again i want to see something <laughs> Oh, with youngster. youngster. Like youngster. Wow. Musical crush all day every day. I love youngster guys. <laughs> so what you got another joint with him? Um no, I don't. I don't, but I'd really like to get back into studio with him. There are a lot of other cool things happening. I'm cooking up the album right now. Um it's going to drop early next year. Um also because after the American trip a lot of things changed. Um yeah. I I I am definitely playing in that space now. So with the album we decided to like really push it back and and expand on 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 everything we would we were doing. So I'll be out a lot in Atlanta and in New York putting together some like really cool features with like some really really cool artists. Um so yeah, that's that's where I am right now. I think it's time for females to expand. I love it. Let's check out the comments of what people are saying, you know. Um Okay, just Zolila saying, just Zolila saying, why is Gigi looking like she's about to go out during a lockdown? <laughs> just this, Gigi, thank. I've been calling a bunch of guys who are like, are they, are they just pick up the phone. <laughs> you know what? I had to learn that very late. Sorry, I had to learn that very late. Presentation is really, really important, guys. And I've been getting, you know, um. advice from some really cool girls who've done amazing things with their lives so it's very important that i i show up for stick and the team and look professional you never know who's watching yeah niggas be like <laughs> we going out on a date because you're looking so good we going out on a virtual date you know is gigi going on date <laughs> i don't know um, oh <laughs> ocean blend says i still listen to meda she wrote you know Um so that's that's a fan for real. Um Bruce from now says Soweto and um she literally like has the South African flags. Medupe says I love your talent, I love your personality. Uh um Ocean really says it fucks with like murder she wrote, you know. Um <laughs> Um LSG Universal says Gigi is hot, you know. Um and I and I and I got word the the Lockenville joint is Mojo Jojo. Mojo Jojo is fire, no, no. you know. Mojo Jojo is a trap song recorded in Atlanta. The video was shot in Atlanta with a young she's also young. She's like ah, oh, I feel like she's the Gigi on that other side of the world. Her name is Bibi. I say there's a lot of talk about her right now. Um she's blowing up guys. She's doing really really well. Um and I think people are going to love the the video cuz the song is doing really well, especially during lockdown. So that's a bit weird, but I'm just I'm super grateful. Blessing on blessing. PDP says it like the ara. Okay, PDP donkey. Um have we got an album date? 2021 hopefully when rona decides she's going away okay all right i got you um um let's just see man um i'm I, like like we say you know um i think man there's a lot of comments out here but um but you know i mean you're doing a lot and you know i'm on your i'm on your whatsapp group when you're messaging and you're sending out messages so you know <laughs> I'm um, sorry that must be so annoying Nah, it, it it no, it gives me it 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 lets me know that you're working, so I ain't mad at yeah. that. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, just like you know? said, then when it pops up, you're like, okay, and then you check. Nah, 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 nah. 
Uh, when you mute it, it's like that means I don't want. I want to know, you know. I want to know, you know what I mean. Um, yo, Jean, just thanks for taking my call, though, you know, in this time, and I hope you staying clean, being safe, washing your hands, you know. Um, and yeah, man, you you you're a queen king. Do your thing. Because babe. can I say something so, it's very quickly? My little sister's here, and she's like such a big fan. She just wants to say hi. And then I just yeah. like screen grab her saying hi to you and flashing and then I'll leave you alone. She even noticed you had like a billboard somewhere once when you were driving and she was like <laughs> like <laughs> So she's like one of your biggest hi. Hello. Oh, oh, we're trying to like screen grab it. Can somebody please screen grab it? You say what? I got this. You got to Uh, let me okay. speak that. Okay. What's up? Okay. Smile. Okay. Okay. Smile. Okay. Smile for the grab. Say grab. Say hi. Hi. How are you doing? How are you <laughs> nice to meet you. What's your I'm name? <laughs> She's so nice. Nice. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much. My street cred now in the family home is going to be like on a hundred now. She's going to be making me Milo and hot chocolate because I introduced her to Slicker. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, girl. Take care, man. Thank, Thank you. So much, bro. Thank you. Ciao. Broadcast live.